Lonely in the spare office, night speaking. Galactic Knight, are you okay, dude? Just moping about being alone. Don't you have a review to do? Is that all I am to you? An internet personnel you watch and laugh at? That is literally your definition. Well, I can't just make a love potion to have someone fall in love with me. This is for a review, isn't it? I'm surprised it took you this long. Yeah, for some reason, Valentine's Day specials really like to force people in love instead of having it grow and develop. And a good example is Jimmy Neutron. Yeah, apparently love can actually be created in a lab as a potion. Now, and because this, it makes a weirdly disturbing episode. That I can't make heads or tails. So, that's it. Dude, I'm still on the phone. Oh, sorry. Jimmy Neutron. I'm changing my number after this. <laughs> we start this episode with Miss Fowl talking about Valentine's Day to the class. Attracted to his Madame Curie, the mother of modern radiology. Like most science nerds, they admire a woman more dead than alive. Yeah, I'll punch myself out for that. We then see a couple celebrating Valentine's Day when the girl is bossing around the boy. How could a regular guy like Oleander sink so low? A follow up question who the hell names their kid Orly Ander? It's like they want him to get mocked. Also, I think we need to call an ambulance. Am I the only one who thinks she said that like a serial killer? It was the old red onyx girl or I'll sink his toes again. After school, Jimmy invites Sheen and Carl over to show them his new invention. Gentlemen, you are about to witness the completion of my most dangerous experiment yet. More powerful than the atom bomb, more lethal than an orbiting space laser. It is stronger than the Affinity Gauntlet and can destroy twice as more than the atomic bomb. He shows them he created a bottle of love hormones, and I love how Sheen's first reaction is to destroy it without knowing what Jimmy's planning to use it for, which is to make an anti-version of it so they won't fall in love with anyone. I'm not a scientist, so I shouldn't argue about what they're saying. End up like Oleander? You mean defeated, numb, stripped of his own free will? Kid, that's later in life. You still got eight more years left. I'll keep the pheromone inside this vacuum sealed containment area until the vaccine is fully developed. So, when does Carl screw things up? So, Jimmy lets Carl use the computer, and honestly, Jimmy should have been more clearer. And Carl accidentally raises the hormones. Jimmy and Sheen go out of the lab to see Cindy and Libby mocking them, and the boys found love due to the potion with a couple of goofy faces. <clears throat> Few questions. One, why were Cindy and Libby in front of Jimmy's lab? Were they just waiting for them to come out? Second, they were there at the same time, so how come Jimmy and Sheen fell in love with both of them? Third, those faces. No offense, but they look like they are going to molest them. And finally, no, that's pretty much it. In the lab too long. Gag, new twist. <laughs> Jimmy and Sheen. Okay, I don't know why Carl will fantasize her as a cookie, and nor do I wish to find out. We'll speak of this later. Hmm. Yeah, that'll be the face I'll make throughout this entire special. We cut to Jimmy trying to get Cindy out of his head, and we cut to Sheen trying to win over Libby. What are you doing? No, really, you look like a rooster having a spasm attack. Sheen gives Libby his first toy, and she is convinced to be his valentine. Guess she considers the rooster dance first base. Jimmy starts to look for Cindy, and Cindy, Libby, and a random character as they... He'll comply with my every demand! Oh, thank God, it's a musical. I mean, it's almost the middle of the episode, might as well, right? We'll even let Billy West sing a lyric in this very choreographed musical. Hell, let's get Vanilla Ice in here sing Go Cindy Go. Jimmy then enters the candy bar and... I love you, Cindy Vortex! 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 (gasps) 
Three, two, one. <laughs> Looks like Jimmy got creamed. Boo! Frank, you messy little hooligan. I just cleaned that floor eight months ago. You're out of here. Yeah, yeah. The only reason I'm punishing you is because... Because... I'm apparently the only one that works here. In the afternoon, Cindy catches up with Jimmy and accepts his date. I made a date with Cindy! No! Oh my God! So, Jimmy came to the lab and tries to freshen up for Cindy's date. Uh, I knew he was trying to freshen up, but... Actually, what am I saying? A boy at that age in the 2000s, I'm surprised he doesn't have a full library. But weirdly enough, with Sheen and Libby, Sheen builds a shrine for her. And I know this is weird, but Sheen and Libby do make a believable couple. I know in the show it blossomed in later episodes, but Sheen is doing his best the way he knows. And Libby's seeing how he can be silly but sweet in a way that she has a caring feeling. I know there was also Planet Sheen, but let's be honest, even Nickelodeon doesn't admit that exists. We cut to Hugh and Judy. Walking, 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 walking. <laughs> what do you say to a joke like that? Monkey see, monkey do? That means two things. I'm so sorry. My monkey is no bother, you see. And Rob Paulson is doing a bad Italian accent. Trust me, that's the least disturbing thing in this special. Hugh tries to pet the monkey, but the monkey fights Hugh behind a bush. Yeah, it's okay, honey. I think he just wants to wrestle. He was responsible for AIDS, wasn't he? There can be no masks between us, Judy. Carl? Ah, 